hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you 10 techniques for arranging your tracks. These are going to help you turn your loops into full evolving productions. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more music production content coming up. If you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all of the foundations of music production, check out our Beginner to Advanced Live 12 Start to Finish course. Make sure to also check out the Arrangement Academy, which teaches you the fundamentals as well as genre-specific techniques for Amandic House, Techno, Tech House and Afro House. To see all that, check the video description. Before we get started with the project that I have prepared for today, as well as all the other techniques, it's important to start off from the fundamentals. And and the most basic arrangement is called the pop form. Let me pull up an infographic. So the pop form is a pretty basic arrangement. It's a very common structure used in countless tracks. So we get started by introducing some sounds and just setting the mood and then slowly increasing the tension throughout the verse. Then we have the pre-chorus section or the build-up which really raises the tension to this climax moment here in the chorus. This chorus is repeated a bunch of times and then we go into a bridge which just is supposed to contrast with the chorus and it's a low energy break. It introduces a bit of variation and then we go into a drop once again. Often it's changed a bit from the chorus. This drop is repeated a bunch of times and then we go into the outro which is like a reverse introduction. More and more elements go out and we are gradually lowering the tension. So it's really important to know this by heart and to arrange a few tracks according to the structure because then when you master this arrangement, you will be able to experiment and think outside the box and do something unconventional. This is just a very conventional modern arrangement structure, which is a great starting point for many, many tracks. All right, so what if your particular genre doesn't follow the pop form exactly? That is going to be the case with many electronic genres, actually. So then it's really important to really study your genre, study the arrangements common in the genre. The most basic thing you could do if you're just listening to your tracks on Spotify or wherever, is just to take a piece of paper and write down what elements are playing in which sections. You can create like a tension map like I did right here, but you can do all of that on a piece of paper. So just for example, in the intro, we start off from the kick, then we add the clap, then we add the hi-hats, then we add the bass and so on and so on. And for example, there's a cool trick used in the second drop with a different lead sound. You can dissect a few tracks that you like in this way. And I'm sure that when you start arranging on your own, you're gonna have a few nice tricks under your belt. So doing that on paper is the most basic technique, but you could also do that very conveniently in Ableton. Here I have an arrangement of a full track. We've got a drums group, a bass group, an instruments group. As you can see, there's lots and lots going on. But if we didn't have access to this and we just have an audio curve, you can just import it straight into Ableton and start doing an outline like this. So if we really simplify all the layers into the most prominent types of tracks, we get this kind of an outline. These are all just empty MIDI clips. There's nothing inside. So we get started from the lead, then we add the main bass, we add the kick, we add the hats, we add the clap, and then some of these elements actually are disabled over here in the pre-drop section, and then everything is playing once again. So all of these things are really crucial to help you visualize sort of what's going on. And even if you're analyzing entire templates, this is still useful because it can be quite confusing to analyze countless tracks. And by just listening through the track and carefully mapping out which elements play in which parts, you then have a much better overview of what's actually going on. And in Ableton, you can always just map out the different sections with empty MIDI clips, or you can do time markers like this. Even you can take a blank utility or anything really and try to map out the energy curve, however you like really. And this just gives you an overview of which sections have the most energy, where we are building up, where we are winding down and what's the energy like during the bridge section. Another really important thing is that if you are making dance tracks, whether that would be house or techno or anything else, it's really important that your track stays DJ friendly because you're just making it easier and more possible that a DJ actually takes your tracks and plays them in the club. 
So typically you would have half a minute to a minute of an introduction and you're generally trying to stay with minimal harmonic content, maybe like a pad or maybe like an atmosphere somewhere, but generally you're focusing on the drums. Some sections should be loop friendly. So if the DJ wants to actually extend your introduction, it's easy for them to do this. And it's quite easy to do actually. You just take the verse or drop drums and you start off with only a few elements and you gradually bring up all of the different elements on all the layering. And here's where the difference between a radio mix and a club mix comes into play. You might actually have different versions for different scenarios. So in a radio mix, it's not really necessary to have a minute of a drum introduction, but in a club mix, that's really, really crucial. All right, so let's say we have a loop like this. Th these are all just empty clips, but I'm uh, just doing this for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to delete everything else. And typically, if you're doing stuff in arrangement view, it's just going to be at the beginning. There are actually two approaches to getting started. My favorite approach is actually to take your loop, cut it and paste it forward, maybe even further. And I'm starting from moving the loop forward because typically the full loop or the drop, whatever you're starting with, is going to be somewhere later in the track. You're not really starting out from all of the tracks playing at the same time. And then to start copying different things back to the beginning, listening in how the sound works by itself and adding gradually more and more elements. But there's also the second approach and that's just copying the loop a bunch of times. But what happens then is that you have to disable or remove a lot of tracks to just get started with a simple arrangement. So we get started from this element and then maybe we add this element, then maybe these two elements and so on and so on. And well, the disadvantage of this system is that you have to really disable a lot. You're just copying the full loop and just disabling, disabling or removing. All right, so the next technique is to try to tell a good story with your track. Even if you got started by creating the drop section, try to arrange from the very start. Don't pay less attention to the intro section just because it's a bit boring to you or that it's pretty obvious. Really try to get into the mind of the listener and make it appealing from the very beginning. And also telling a story kind of means that you have to focus on the energy level and the flow of the track. Instead of focusing on specific elements, just focus on how the overall track flows and whether you're giving your listener a good amount of time to get familiar with the track's elements or maybe you're extending it too much. These are all the decisions that need to be made from the very start of the track. So before you get into arranging all the interesting sections, try to actually tell the story from the beginning. All right, so the next technique is going to be related to creating tension. And there are a few ways of adding tension. And these are really important to master. So obviously you could add tension by adding more elements. Unless your track is really crowded, the listener is going to notice if you add a new synth, a new layer, when more and more is going on, you're typically raising the energy level. Of course, typical risers, reversed crashes, white noise transitions, all of that can create tension, but all of that is just adding more and more elements and filling out the frequency spectrum even more. Another way of crafting tension could actually be removing certain elements. And that's a bit contradictory to what I've said. For instance, as you can see here, right before the drop, in the bridge section, we are introducing a new element, the pad, but we are also removing the kick, the hats and the clap. So all of our drums. And by removing some elements, you actually can create a lot of anticipation and you make the drop much more powerful. A similar thing happens here. So we also take out the drums. Here we just disable the kick in this section and it also is quite powerful when we bring the kick back. So there are many, many different ways you could use this. Not only can you add elements, but you can also remove elements to add variation and tension. And the last technique and another way of creating tension would be to actually process some tracks or the entire mix. You could do a DJ style low cut or some sort of reverb throw. Typically, of course, when we cut the bass in the buildup, then it makes it much more powerful in the drop when we bring the bass back. But also, for example, making the buildup a bit more washed out with reverb could sound a bit trippy and raise the overall tension. All right, so the next technique I want to talk about is introducing elements. And of course, you can simply make elements 
start at certain point without the transition, but oftentimes in sections like the intro or in the outro, maybe you don't want to abruptly end a certain track and that's where automations come into play. So the most basic type of automation used in many, many tracks is a gain automation. Many tracks, for example, in the outro would have some sort of automation on the overall gain of the track to have a fade out or in the intro section, the reverse. If you're introducing some element, you can just, you can do a fade with like utilities gain to make it much more gradual. So that's one thing. Filtering is the second one. The auto filter effect is great for this. You just have a very simple curve and you can open up the filter more and more or do the reverse and just open up the high pass filter more and more, many different ways of doing it. And you could also experiment with reverb and delay. For example, you can take reverb and start all the way at 100% of dry wet and slowly bring the element in by lowering and automating this knob or you can do the same thing with delay. The next thing I want to talk about is the element of surprise. So even if you're arranging your first tracks at some point where you already have the outline of your arrangement, it's really important to keep the listener engaged. And that's best done by doing something a bit unexpected. So for instance, here in the break, we have a different bass sound playing, which really catches your ears. And it's a bit of a surprise. And there are many different ways of adding variation like this but it could be summed up to two techniques. First of all, you can process your tracks in an interesting way. For instance, throw a crazy chorus on top of some sound to make it stand out, or you can add some sort of echo, some sort of DJ style effect. The options are endless here. So processing tracks is one thing, but you could also just change the MIDI on a certain track. So for instance, if you have a hi-hat pattern, you can change that up. If you have a bass line, you can play a different pattern like we have over here. And when you've already played an element a bunch of times, it can really stand out when you change the notes. So really considering surprising the listener with something and adding variation by one of these two techniques. Now the next thing is that small changes actually make quite big differences, especially if you're arranging repetitive genres like techno and house. Every next section does not have to be drastically different from the previous ones. For example, in pop or rock, you would typically have completely different harmonic structures of the verse, of the chorus, and maybe even of the bridge. So there would be more harmonic changes, but a great melodic house track can actually stay with the same bass line with a similar harmonic structure throughout the entire track. So you don't have to overcomplicate and reinvent the track with every section change. Try to do subtle changes and your tracks will really benefit from that. And the last tip for today is to not get hung up on the many different details of the arrangement. There's not really any right way of arranging. It's all very subjective and you can easily get stuck at this stage because looking at the DAW, especially if you have a complicated project, there are just so many options that you can easily get overwhelmed. And when that happens, just try to remind yourself that the main objective is to try to keep the listener engaged throughout the track. If you feel like you're losing a bit of objectivity and you're focusing on some minor details, give your track a break, come back to it with fresh ears, and that very often helps. You could also try exporting your track even if the arrangement isn't perfect yet and listen to it outside the DAW or not even on your computer. And when you do this, you will be left with just the audio waveform. You won't be judging the arrangement visually by all the clips and how that's arranged. You'll have to focus on the sound itself. And after all, that's how your track is going to be perceived. Try to just focus on how the energy flows overall. All right, I hope you found these tips useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with start to finish courses and making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our Beginner to Advanced Live 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also check out the Arrangement Academy, which teaches you all the fundamentals as well as genre specific techniques for melodic house, techno, tech house, and Afro House. To see all that, check the video description, make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, write a comment, and I will see you in the next ones.